if you see all these uh, duties yeah. and necessities, yeah. uh, this could not be financed by a membership fee. Yeah. Um, how do you think about mm. about raising uh, money by uh, sponsorships or by uh, by finding uh, Bob Geldof to make a, 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 sp a concert yeah. and donating him for, yeah, yeah. Uh, for yeah. the Heavy Monty or something like this? Yeah. And we have uh, oh, Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman, the famous actor in the U.S. He has bees on his farm now, and, and so he's saving the world, and which is good. I mean, he but he's raised the awareness, so get some celebrities to uh, to do something to, to fundraise. We've also considered lar large corporations, but that are very green. Things like Illy Coffee or things that rely on pollination. But we have to be careful there because we want, if it's a big sponsor, we, we obviously wouldn't go to Bayer or Monsanto. We would, we would have to go, go with someone. Uh, no, of course not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this yeah. this uh, is very counterproductive, yeah. but there are other big companies uh, without direct connection to uh, to agriculture. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought of some of the more um, some of the food production things like um, that within within different areas of the world that that are that are more organic kind of thing than and that rely on bees. They might be willing to work to sponsor if one mm. So this is one possibility. Yep. Um, rising more money. Um, be on the table. Yep. Um, what else? Uh, let's uh, let's yeah. let's put it that way. Yeah. The um, the normal beekeeper mm -hmm. and the national beekeeping associations. Right. They come uh, biannual to this uh, Epimondia right, conference. Right. 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 And and if you are not a delegate or a, a member of the staff or yeah. of the of the presidents. Yeah. You register, you come, yep. you participate, you know little people, yep. because uh, everybody is a stranger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by chance, you get, uh, you meet uh, interesting people. Yep. Um, but it is uh, difficult to uh, to increase your network because it is not guided at these conferences. Yep. And then you leave. Yeah. So uh, I know a lot of beekeeper telling me why should I go to this Apimondia conference? It's always the same. Yeah. Uh, listening to uh, to speeches bah, bah, in bah, English. Bah, bah, bah. Yeah. I don't understand English. Yeah. It's a problem. Yeah. We need more, more translations. And uh, and the exhibition I know already. Ah, because yeah, you have a smaller version in in Germany or wherever. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. so what is missing? Missing is the the involvement of the participants before and after yep. the conference. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the question is, how, how can we achieve this? I would agree. I, I thought, like I was in Montpellier, France, at that, and I thought that was a great conference in just engaging everyone. We're looking at ways of taking some of the, the better talks that are done at Apamundia and then doing short things on them where we then communicate it again to the beekeeper. So they have a, another synopsis of what happened and doing those over time. So there's continuity between the meetings. We also hold special symposia in different parts of the world. And, and they usually happen for three days and then and no one knows about them. So we advertise, <laughs> yeah. We had one in Ethiopia. We had one in, uh, I don't know. We have them in different parts. We had one in the Philippines on stingless bees and, and no one knows except the people who are there. So we have to communicate that better. Um, something about that you said about the meeting. Ah. We're in the major rooms, in the big rooms, it's supposed to be English, Spanish, French, supposed to be German, and Russian, I think. I think we have five or six languages. In German, it's not. It's no. not. Okay. In, in, other, in other countries, no. Okay. Yeah. But this is not enough. The problem is beekeeper, um, not always are, are, are being educated to be able to speak English. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. Uh, we should have uh, more translation, yep. um, 20 languages, but who is paying for it? Yeah, exactly. Or even, even 10 languages. If we had 8 to 10 languages, we could reach a huge, huge audience. Yeah. yeah. We do. Yeah. And then um, make a live stream of the whole conference. 
so we can reach much more people not uh, not uh, ready to not ready to travel okay so we're proposing that for for UFA Russia mm -hmm. it won't we won't live stream every every event we'll we'll live stream for some time during each day so it lasts for four to five days we'll live stream the premier talks and we'll have those translated we think four to six languages it depends on cost so they'll be live streamed and also recorded so a member in Germany or anywhere else could pay I don't know the cost yet 20 to 50 euros and attend the conference virtually so that we're moving that way and we hope by we meet in 2022 in Ufa Russia and then the next year in Santiago Chile and I I can envision by that time by especially by Santiago half of our attendees will be virtual they, they, they won't be there but we will we will do the highlights and we'll have someone like yourself or myself walking around like even in the trade show ah, and we're looking at you know I mean just have a little tour in the trade show we have the best yeah. virtual yeah I don't like it no no well, no, I'm Only virtual, I don't like. Yeah. Um, live and virtual. Yes, it will, it'll, it'll be both. But uh, both, okay. It'll be both. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, misunderstanding. No, sorry. Okay. We have as many people that want to attend can attend. Yeah. We have maybe five, six, eight thousand people there. But we have a crew that is filming certain rooms and giving a flavor of the conference. Great. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And because, how how long can you sit in, in front of a computer or a TV and watch? If it's not live, you, I mean, live you can have the coffee, you can have the beer, and you, you have some stamina. So I think we'd stream for two to three hours during each day, and that would be, you know, that would be what we capture from that day. The next day you tune in, and also we have to think about the time zones. You know, so we just, we have it available. You can watch, you know that uh, Jürgen Binder is speaking on this day, and you know, Tom Seeley is speaking on this day, and you, you can tune in. You just pay a fee to, to be able to virtually attend. Or stream it later. Or stream it later, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're getting there. We, we, we were already prepared, and then COVID hit. We should back up. But yeah. to organize uh, Ape Mondia, the national, the national group is responsible. So how, much is, uh, how big is your influence to the, uh, to the, uh, to the decisions? To local? To the decisions of the national organization team, we have we have to maintain control because we can't leave that totally up to them. So it's a three-way partnership. Now we, we have a professional um, conference organizing group that we've worked with now for two two meetings, April Mondia, the conference organizer group, and the local, which is Russia in this case first. So we have a three-way, and and the decisions are made between all of us. They look at what some of the local arrangements, the music, the entertainment, the venue and stuff. But these, these people are professionals and they know what we need to carry out the conference, with the, the size of the rooms and things like that. So it's a, it's a little bit of a, um, it's a fun exercise. Before we had the professional organizing group, we, it was just two partners and it was, it was difficult. Did, did you go to the Ukraine, the meeting in the Ukraine, in Kiev? Okay, I won't say anymore. No, it was, I attended. It was. I thought it was a very good meeting, but there were a few, shall we say, things that didn't go s smoothly. Yeah, yeah, but but why? This is not uh, because there was no professional uh, organizing team. So this was because the Ukrainian partners uh, had different opinions. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And and this is um, the, the national stakeholder mm -hmm. have to. Um, to uh, guide a discussion process before, yes, and to find a way uh, to 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 pull on one rope. Well, it has to have local flavor. It has to have their flavor and their. We want that. That's why we move around the globe. We yeah. want that flavor, but we also have to make sure that things run, you know, somewhat efficiently and things like that. So it's it's a balance. It's a balance. Uh, um, Do you um, observe that um, running the Epimondia is changing uh, something in the country? I'm, I'm where, sure. the, where the conference uh, um, took place? Ah. Yeah, I think it, 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 it's good 
people, because people come from all over the world, and then they remember, like I remember Montpellier. I, I fell in love with Montpellier. I mean, just the south of France, and I had known it before, but I thought it was a beautiful city. Uh, I enjoyed the conference in Korea. So I mean, different conferences have different flavors. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, uh, the influence the oh, conference has for the country. Yes. Yeah, I think I think they gain their their beekeeping is is better recognized. They get a chance to showcase their beekeeping. And, and it brings, I mean, it's only a week, but it brings some, you know, some, generates some interest for, in, in tourism and everything else for the week that we're there. Yeah. Also for the beekeeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, about, let's say South Korea, for instance, we know that about, let's say 80% of the total participants will be from the area. So that would be China, Japan, you know, and, and, and Korea, and down into Southeast Asia. Stuff like, so we know and it's a great opportunity they don't have to travel as far and so any of our conferences and then the other 20% is Europeans Americans whatever you know Africans yeah. so as we move around the globe we provide an opportunity for people to attend an Apamandia without having to travel so far mm. and that's really important now more than ever with restrictions and, and, and our footprint that's why we want to go virtual partly virtual we still want in person provide this virtual option so that we people can attend without burning up you know airline fuel and stuff yeah. uh, let's look for a minute to Honeyfront okay and um, reports say there is a big amount of honey uh, not being honey right and, and um, what do you think about this uh, the general situation I think, well, I do think it's a problem. I think there is, there is honey fraud. And our ability to detect it, there's always, uh, it's like, a, like an arms race. We, we improve the testing, and then they develop some new syrup or rice, some way to, to, to get around the testing so that it doesn't look like it's been adulterated. Uh, I think it hurts, it hurts the beekeeper and the price, and it hurts the consumer because they're not getting the product they deserve. So, yeah. How can we change it? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Uh, we're not going to change it. We have we have a statement on honey fraud. That, that won't change honey fraud. But it raises awareness. And I think raising awareness from the consumer, it, it, that's scary because you tell the consumer, ah, some honey could be adulterated and not true honey. But I think the opportunity there is to, to encourage them to buy local honey, because I think from the local beekeepers, you tend to have you know good products, locally sourced, and you get a premium price. And then the bee, the consumer can feel better about it anyway. They're buying local. So I think I know I, I I people say oh the first thing you have to do is education, but I think in this case education educating the public about what they should be buying is important. Then that very clear stuff that'll stay on the shelf for three years that's been ultra filtered, they'll, they'll walk right by it. Even if it's super cheap, it's half the price, but they'll walk by it. No, I have to have this good Swiss or whatever, German honey, yeah. Okay, uh, let's hope uh, that this will... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hope. The awareness will increase. Yeah. Um, last question. Ah. What do you think um, about the future of beekeeping uh, with this with these enormous uh, pesticides and the general situation? Well, I think in general that agriculture needs to diversify. They need to, like even within farms, don't not just grow two crops, but to use cover cropping and things like that. And all that would help bees and help reduce the pesticide load. So I think we just have pushed way too far to monoculture and herbicide use and everything to And the herbicide use hurts bees because now there's no other flowers around, even in the margin. So I think the agricultural production system has been too input reliant, and there's a huge effort to make it more diverse. Make you know, yeah, and and, and even the consumer can help drive that by demanding organic, because organic production used to be very slow, and, and slowly, if you can get a premium price for your product, more and more farmers will turn to a, a more reasonable type of production system. Yeah. My opinion, the price of a product must be just, must show uh, all the cost. The total cost. Which yeah. is the total cost. Yeah, If yeah. We, the price shows the total cost, 
organic food is much cheaper than conventional food and immediately the system will change. Okay. So yeah, this yeah. is what we should uh, demand from politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the farmers are underwritten. The farmers are underwritten in many countries. You know, to, to ensure that that gets us into food security. The, the German government, the U.S. government, they want to make sure they can produce food. You have to have food. Um, we only need three things in life. Food, shelter, some, and reproduction. But that's it. Everything else, everything else in life is a, is a want. I want this, I want that. But you have to have food, shelter, and reproduction. <laughs> but anyway, um, the, the, the farmers are underwritten in many countries to, to make sure that they can produce their own food within the country. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. This is important. For, yeah. uh, food sovereignty yeah. and uh, food safety yeah. is important. We should not forget it. Yeah. Even if we have a lot of uh, hobbyists, hobby yeah. beekeepers, yeah. um, beekeeping is part of agriculture yeah. and a part of food security. Yeah. And uh, that's why we, 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 uh, we are an important and an, uh, a serious part of the food production system. If, if some, for some reason there were no commercial beekeepers or no even hobby beekeepers and, and bees weren't there in the, the production system, can you imagine the outcry when we don't have you know, all the fruits, nuts and vegetables? It's like wheat, wheat and rice is good, but you're, you're not going to live on it very long. So, yeah. Yeah. Jeff Pettis? President of Ampimondia. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you, Jürgen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Lerne richtig Imkern mit Online-Kursen nach guter imkerlicher Praxis der Professor Ludwig Armbruster Imkerschule. Wir begleiten unsere Fördermitglieder durchs Bienenjahr mit einer wöchentlichen Online-Sprechstunde. Unsere Kurse sind die ideale Ergänzung zum Anfängerkurs im Imkerverein oder zur Praxisarbeit mit einem Imkerpaten. www.armbruster-imkerschule.de